Oh shit, somebody dropped the fucking N-word. First time, first time this year somebody dropped the N-word to me after one of my shows. You guys ever see that bit I did about being in Nashville? And that guy dropped the, the N-word out of fucking nowhere. And he didn't even look around. He said it like he was saying the word like chair or something. And I got all fucking panicked and I didn't know what to do. Every once in a while that happened to me in Tennessee. Nashville, Tennessee. Raleigh, North Carolina. And now uh, Tampa. This is all over the last like four years. So this time uh, was after one of my shows. This dumb broad who wouldn't shut the fuck up the whole show. And she kept standing up. And she had blonde hair that was sort of like a short haircut. And so she ended up looking like Glenn Close in The Natural. She kept standing up. And uh, so at the end of the show, she had to come out to me. Oh, yes, 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 She's all fucking drunk. I'm like, okay, sweetheart. Okay. And, like, you know, I'm selling my DVDs. And as she would go to the left of the table, I would go around to the right. You know, and then she'd go to the right, I'd go to the left. I'm basically keeping a piece of furniture in between us because, you know, these fucking girls, when they get drunk and they come up with that red wine breath, it's fucking horrific, you know? So she comes up to me, she, and I'm like, okay, 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 I'm I, I get it. You had a good time, you weren't trying to disrupt the show, even though I told you to shut the fuck up 15 times. I get it. She goes, no, you don't understand, you don't understand. You, you're one of my favorite comedians. I like you, and I like Cat Williams, even though he's a N-word. <laughs> just looked at her, I go, did you just say... And then she looked at me. I go, all right, you have a good night. And I just walked away. That's my new thing I do. The first time, when it first used to happen, I used to kind of stare at the floor with my eyebrows up, not looking at him like, okay, what the fuck? This is really happening. And then I went through this middle phase of trying to uh, change the person's views, trying to tell them why they shouldn't say it. And I realized that's a fucking waste of time. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like, you have to, like, fuck... I mean, this... It's like the person was, like, 14 or 15 saying it, and they had hope. This person was, like, pushing 40. It's over. You know? That's like the uh, fucking America right now. We think we're going to go into Iraq and drop some fucking Starbucks and cheesecake factories over there, and those people are going to stop. It's over. They're not... They, they're, they're doing what the fuck they're doing. They don't like each other, and we should let them just fucking work it out. So I just look at those... I just Now I just go, like... I, I just clarify what they say. Did you just say this? And they either say yes or just look at me, and I just walk away from them. Uh, so I walk away, and then I'm talking to somebody else, and then all of a sudden she comes staggering up again. No, wait, wait. You don't understand. You, you don't understand. And I said, ma'am, I'm done talking to you. Seriously, I'm done talking to you. Walk away. So, um, I don't know. I know she's going to wake up this morning, and I'm going to be the asshole. I had a couple of those. I have a lot of problems with women down here in Tampa. I had another girl. Uh, she was just drunk and pissed. She comes walking up to the table. Wait, you fucking selling a fucking DVD? I got to fucking buy one. You already fucking have it. And I'm just like, ma'am, you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. What the fuck? My fucking husband wants me to fucking buy a fucking DVD. So, and then she was doing that whole thing, coming around to the back. They wanted to, if I can just establish one thing. I would love to establish after my shows is if somehow I could get people to respect the other side of the table. You know, I don't mind people come around, they want to take a picture, but the people who come around, people who, who you don't mind coming up to you, never come up to you. They all walk out the door, and then they send you a text. I was going to say hi, but I was shy. Sorry. But the fucking drunks come up with spittle coming out of their mouth they just they gotta walk right up to your face what's that Seinfeld the close talkers that's what they end up doing I don't even remember what to, I'm, you know I'm not even drinking I can't even what the fuck happened last night because it's high voltage tower I don't know she just kept coming up to me and she kept cursing I'm like alright lady alright and she goes no no I'm sorry you come over here and hug me it's like no get away from me and then she starts putting her fucking hands on me you know and it's just like you know something you fucking twat I don't want you fucking touching me right now. Okay, but you don't give a shit because you're a woman and I'm a guy and this and it's okay for you to do that. It's not considered anything. If I do it to you, it's fucking some sort of harassment. Right? Get your fucking get your fucking drunk ass hands off of me. You 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 you're a sloppy mess. Get away from me. You know what I'm doing? I want to do? I want to put my hand right on her fucking forehead. You know? And right as she reached up to fucking remove my hand, I gave her that little uh to her head, make that head snap back a little bit. And as 
right as it was registering that I made her head snap back, I would then, like like Chuck Norris, swiftly move to the exact opposite side of the tables, because then I know I know she'd get mad and then start flailing. Oh my God! You just fucking stabbed me in the fucking head. Yes, I did. You drunk cunt. Buy a DVD or don't buy a DVD. But don't fucking you know come up and start fucking cursing me out. I'm not telling you you gotta buy the thing. You fucking twat. Beat it. All right. So I got one more show here in Tampa. <laughs> All right, here's some advice. Somebody's asking me about abroad over there. Dear Bill, uh, since you have no idea who I am, I don't mind writing to you and explaining my current problem I'm experiencing with a certain female. And since you don't know me, you'll probably be more than honest. You'll be more honest than the girls I tell this story to. Okay, here's the deal. I'm currently chasing this girl that I've known for a year who for some reason goes through phases where one day I'm the greatest thing ever and then for the whole next I could die from cancer and she wouldn't blink an eye. She also has a tendency to make me jealous on purpose for no reason at all. I've confronted her on the issue and her explanation was that she hates when I get jealous. All right, right there, dude. She is standing on top of an old Victorian house waving the beware I'm a cunt flag. All right? Dude, you, you got to get away from this girl. This is the, You know what this girl's deal is? She wants to be in a relationship. She doesn't want to be in one with you. But she doesn't want to be alone. All right? And in the back of her head, she knows she's wasting her time by hanging out with you rather than going out trying to find Mr. Right. So what she's doing is, is rather than dealing with that herself, is she's taking it out on you. You know? And, and another thing she's doing is really sadistic is she knows that you like her. And she's playing you, you know, just playing with you. Playing with your fucking mind. And just trying to see the shit that she can get you to do. Fuck her, all right? This, you, know what, you want to fuck that girl? This is the girl. You got to walk away from her. Walk away from her. Go hang out with your buddies. If you don't have any buddies, go get some buddies. Go hang out in a bar and do what I always say to do. All right? Because you're wounded right now. And you're going to be in the bar and you're going to be feeling that. Well, these girls don't make me feel the way this other girl does. Fuck that. You got to beat that feeling down. And you beat it down with alcohol and hitting on girls you don't give a shit about. Get in the fucking game. It's going to build up your self-esteem. Now, I'm not saying be mean to these other girls. Don't take out your heartbreak of that this other fucking chick gave you. Don't take that out on these other girls because then you become a cunt too. Go out there and fucking find out how your personality works. You know, it's going to build up your self-esteem. Next time she sees you, you got a fucking broad on each arm. She's going to get competitive. Next thing you know, your dick is in her fucking mouth. Okay? And you finish in there, son. All right. <laughs> Sorry, man. I stood up. I stood up. I started feeling like a fucking coach. I, w I went a little big there. Don't finish unless she says it's okay. All right. But if you bang her, definitely wear a condom. You have fucking respect for yourself. You have respect for your body. All right? I go out there and talk some shit, son. If you had shoulder pads, I'd be fucking banging on her right now and send you out right through the fucking tunnel into some meat market. Okay. Overrated, underrated for this week. Uh, overrated. This guy says children. <laughs> right off the bat, I love this guy. He said, I'm sick and tired of people doing shit for the children. We got to do it for the children. I understand that you need to look after infants and toddlers, but I remember being 9, 10, and 11, and at that age, I really didn't give a fuck. I was too busy trying to hump some girl behind a garage, all the while trying not to get caught by the people who were supposedly looking after me, my parents. Half of the little twats just want to fucking eat cookies and ice cream and play Xbox 360 all day. So I say, fuck the kids. Help the adults that are struggling with bills and shit. I love that. What a fucking great guy. I love it because he's speaking from his heart, and right in the end, it petered out with his ignorance. Fuck the kids and, and help the adults who are struggling with bills and shit. I love and shit. It really just knocks it down by fucking 90 IQ points. Right down to my level. All right, I'll go with that one. Exactly. Why don't we help out the fucking people without jobs? And then this is other, this is his other one. Underrated. Uh, he says whores, and he spelt it H-O-A-R-S. I think that's hilarious because isn't boars spelt with a B, which is a pig, you know, which is another fucking derogatory term from a woman. So he's kind of combined whores and boars. Whores, H-O-A-R-S. He said there's nothing like a good whore, H-O-A-R. She will make you appreciate a good woman. 
I can't tell you how many times I've looked at a stripper or some cunty little whore and thought to myself, thank God she goes, she goes home to some other dumb fuck. Wives and girlfriends hate them, but until you spend the night at a club full of skanks and whores, you can't really appreciate a good woman. See, I like that because it's actually positive for women. That's right. That's absolutely right. I totally agree with you on that one. All right. Uh, where do we go? Where do we go? Okay, Bill. Uh, really want to thank you for the podcast. It has helped me tremendously in getting through one of the hardest times of my life. Well, thank you very much. I won't drag it out too much, but basically my wife and I had a daughter, and two years later we ended up with triplets too. Wow. It was brutally hard. Yeah, dude. You know, you know what sucks when you get the triplets? It not only is it brutally hard, but it's not quite hard enough to make the fucking local news and have people send you money for your fucking health insurance, you know? What is that magic number? It's got to be at least four, if not five, and then people give a shit. But if you have eight, they resent you. Okay, um, I discovered I get panic and anxiety attacks from the sound of the baby screaming. And the worries of four little kids gives me um, three-day-long anxiety attacks over the smallest things. I slipped into a serious depression for about a year. Um, the market destroyed our savings. Jesus Christ, dude. This sounds like the beginning of one of those fucking sad basic cable movies. Soon after the triplet's second birthday, during Father's Day weekend in early summer, the wife tells me she isn't really in love with me anymore. Father's Day weekend, she says that. What the fuck? She also has taken off her wedding ring just to see if I would notice. Well, I didn't. I was a bit more worried about surviving each day with four kids screaming all day, long enough, long, through all, oh shit, screaming all day long and living on four hours of sleep for the previous two years. Yeah, you know, that's that classic woman thing where they just, they don't say what's on their mind is they send you what they say. They send signals. You know? And all these fucking dumb cunts who host these shows on TV, what do they say? Yeah, women send signals all the time and guys don't see them. Why are you sending signals? Are you fucking mute? Say what the problem is. Stop sitting over in the corner of the living room fucking flashing a flashlight at me. Like I know Morse code or whatever the fuck that is. What is that called when, they, when they, the Navy ships would do the light thing? Is that Morse code with the light? I don't know what the fuck it is. I'm not happy in my marriage so you, you fucking slide your ring off. You know what I mean? I barely notice when you get a fucking haircut. I got four fucking babies over here. You fucking... Ugh. Thank God I'm not married. Thank God. Thank God. Okay, let's plow ahead here. All right. Um, so I take the, uh, the warning seriously and I get my ass in gear. Okay, now in defense of her, if you were like really, you know, going through a depression and shutting down. I don't know if you weren't helping with the kids. That would also put some uh, tension on it. See, look at me, trying to be a little fair and balanced, just like Fox News. Um, so, I t so I take the warning seriously, and I get my ass in gear. I needed that shake-up since wallowing in depression is easy, uh, but getting out of, it, out of it is very tough. Taking on depression and anxiety to save my marriage of 10 years and keep my family together was what made me take it seriously uh, and succeeded. Um, I worked hard all summer to get my life back in order. I was doing much better. On September 11th, great day, I know, she tells me she, want, she went on a date. She had serious feelings for the guy. She had been seeing him for a while. They worked together at school. Rather than get mad or freak out, my first words were, I forgive you, since all I wanted was to save my kids from divor divorced parents. The first two years with the triplets were rough on her, too, so I tried to be understanding. All right, so you're being a good guy here. All right, um, I wanted to live with my kids more than anything, even if it was killing me because of the stress. She agreed to go to counseling and try, uh, try to fix things. All right, so they go to, they go to a marriage counselor. Uh, but he says, all for naught. Um, she never wanted to fix things. She was still seeing the guy the whole time we were fixing things, in air quotes. Um, and she just wanted to be able to say she... She just wanted to be able to say she did what she could before divorcing me. It was all just to ease her conscience two weeks after our 11th anniversary in February 
I get it. It's over. Since she's never coming back to me, we talked about it. And, um, and she admitted she was going to request a trial separation in the spring anyway. On September 11th, yes, again, one year to the day, the divorce was final. I'll be drinking, I'll be drinking heavily that day the rest of my life, you can be sure. Uh, now I get calls from the kids bawling their eyes out. Sorry, everybody. I know this is bumming you out. Bawling their eyes out because they miss me and want to live with me. And why won't I move back? Jesus Christ. What a phone call. All right. The triplets are about to turn four. And the older child is about to turn six. I would love to tell them I can't move back because your mom is a lying, cheating, skank whore. And she, let, and she left me for that guy, Kevin, who comes over now, who's 10 years younger than her, who also teaches at her school. Um, but she is a good mom to them, and I don't want them to hate her mother. I'll do the hating. See, this guy's a good guy, and I bet a lot of women will listen to this shit. You know, right off the bat, they, they, you know, women stick together. I don't know why they do that. They would... Uh, when he called her a lying, cheating, skank whore, I bet a good 30% of the women who listened to that were actually like, well, she did, the reason why she did it was because you were in a depression and you were helping the kids. That's why she went out and sucked another cock. Yeah, let that roll around your feminine brain for half a fucking second. You like how I create arguments? For all I know, 100% of women are agreeing with me on this one. Anyways, let's plow ahead here. Um, now I would like to thank you for uh, all your comedy. I discovered your podcast soon after I moved out, and uh, every one of them has made my compute to work better. Ba-da-ba-da-ba-da. You've eased my anxiety. All right, let's get to underrated. Um, I do, and I appreciate all the compliments, but it's just weird for me to sit here reading what a great fucking dude I am. Let me tell you why you're awesome, Bill. I don't want to read these people. They just send them to me, and I, I'm doing it for the fans. Anyways, um... He says, uh, what the fuck is it? Now, for the not-so-mushy part. Good, we got past all the compliments. Please rip my cold and distant ex-wife a new one. Could you just call her a cunt one time on your show for me? Um, yeah, I could do that, but I really think it goes without saying. You know what I mean? Put it this way. If they made a 2010 cunt calendar, she would be January, you know, to kick it off. <laughs> Just to kick it off, you know, let you know what you were uh, in store for. Uh, 